Hi everyone. Welcome to another live with Singers Sewing. I'm so happy to see you here. I'm gonna hop over to the comments. So as you guys hop on, I can see your comments and your questions. Welcome, welcome. It is currently notifying everyone that we're going live on Facebook and YouTube. So I'm gonna give everybody a minute to hop on as we just hit the go live button and it takes a couple minutes. So welcome. I'm so happy to see you this afternoon. If you don't know who I am, my name is Bethany. I'm an educator with Singer Sewing Company and I'm so excited to be back for another one of these lives. lives. This is our last one of this year. I cannot believe 2022 is almost over. It has been such a fun year working with Singer and doing all of these monthly projects. So I thought the last one we'd go out with a bang and use some of my favorite machines, which are sergers. So we're going to talk all about sergers today. Um, I'm going to show you a really quick sew up of our monthly project. If you haven't seen our monthly project, this is adorable bottle gift bags made with fleece. I love them. Oh my goodness. So cute. All right. So as you guys are hopping on, please let us know where you're tuning in from. If you're um, new here, I welcome you. If you've been to one of these before, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you. All right. So like I said, we're going to talk about our project of the month, which is the holiday bottle gift bags. Now, I'm pretty sure they've linked this project in the caption, but if not, you can find it on singer.com. Um, under inspiration, there is all of our free projects and tutorials are on there. So you can go and download this one and all of our previous ones straight from our website. So this is what we're going to make today. And I'm going to do the quick version with the rolled hem edge so that you guys can learn how to do that. But you can also, and I teach you this in the tutorial, make it with a cute little cuff at the top. So both ways are super cute. And these are super, super quick. Hello, and thank you for tuning in. Nancy, you're in Tennessee. So am I. I'm just outside of Nashville. So nice to see a fellow Tennessean on here. Thank you for hopping on. So today I'm going to be showing you two different machines. Um, just for time's sake, I set up two. Um, one with the rolled uh, edge hem, rolled hem, and the other one with the four thread overlock stitch. So I'm going to walk you through both of those. Um, but the two machines I'm going to be working on today is the SO100, which most people are familiar with. But then I'm also going to show you an up close in action shot of the new SO700, which is our brand new air thread serger. If you've never seen an air thread serger, it's going to blow your mind. Um, it is truly one of my favorite things is an air thread serger. It just takes all the guesswork out of it and a puff of air threads your loopers for you. And it's so easy. So if you've ever struggled or been worried about trying a serger because threading it can look complicated, it's really not once you get the hang of it. But knowing that you can thread the loopers with a puff of air just makes it so fast to change from stitch to stitch. So Anyways, oh, you're in Cookville. We're just right down the road. <laughs> nice to see you, Nancy. Oh, um, I'm so glad you're watching. First time watching and you're in New York City. That's exciting. My brother is actually up there on vacation right now. So that's really cool. Northern Ireland. Oh, my goodness. Very far away, but I'm glad you're here. Thank you for tuning in from Texas. Oh, my goodness. We have people from Indiana. All right. So we're about to have some fun. If you're just jumping on, I told everybody that we're going to be going over the project of the month, which are these adorable holiday um, bottle gift bags. These are perfect for whipping up real quick. Throw a bottle of your favorite bubbly or whatever you want in it, cider, and gift this to a host at a holiday party and they will love it. I also make extras of these to put my bottles in just to decorate my little kitchen area. Um, so it just looks really festive during the holidays. But you know, I was thinking about this earlier today while I was setting up my studio and I'm in full holiday mode in here, right? Um, I feel like these would be great year round. So if you're like gifting one for an anniversary or an engagement, choose different colors, different fabrics, different ribbons. And this could be like a year round easy gift giving option. So it doesn't just have to be for the holidays, but I hope this is a solution for you guys this year. Michigan and Texas again. Okay, we've got a lot of people tuning in. I'm so glad you're here. Again, my name is Bethany. I'm an educator with Singer Sewing Company today. I'm going to be 
showing you a surge of projects. So this is our last live of the year. I'm super pumped um, to be doing this one because working with sergers is honestly some of my favorite type of sewing. So I know it intimidates a lot of people, but today we're gonna conquer some fears if you have them. And we're gonna talk about sergers while we make up this project, all right? Are you guys ready? Now, if you guys see any links or things that are not related to sewing or from Singer Sewing Company, please do not click on them. I see a few uh, comments popping in. Um, if it's not, if it's a link and it's not from us, do not click on it. It is spam. Um, and we'll get rid of those later, but it's inevitable, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to hop over to a different camera and we're going to show you, I'm going to show you real quick some of the supplies that you're going to need for this project, which everything is listed in the tutorial. You'll see here in the tutorial um, that you'll download, it has a little supply list. So you can print this out and take it with you when you are picking up your supplies at your local craft store or shopping online, which is what I like to do a lot. And then it goes through the details of how to set up your machine for each stitch. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So one thing you're going to need, and I'm not going to show you this step because it's just cutting fabric, but I highly recommend using a really nice ruler and a rotary cutter to cut your fleece. So this is anti-pill fleece, and you can see it's got stretch to it. We want a fleece that has stretch because that way it'll fit different shape bottles. It will stretch around the bottle and hug it really tightly and be really cute. So you want some stretch. There's a really fuzzy side, and then there's more of a smooth side. I make the smooth side my inside and the fuzzy on the outside, but it's totally up to you. You could do it the other way, totally up to you, all right? You're also going to need, outside of a ruler and rotary cutter, um, you're gonna need some sort of marking pen. I grabbed a Sharpie for today, so it'll show up on camera, but uh, it, it's gonna be on the inside. We're gonna cut it off, so you're not even gonna see the Sharpie once we sew it, but. You're going to need some sort of marking pen, and this works really well on this fleece. And I grabbed a smaller ruler just for ease today because we only need a little one inch square mark to mark. So you'll see that in a minute. Uh, you're definitely going to need some ribbon. So something um, that you can tie around the neck of the bottle bag so that it hugs the bottle. Um, so I cut about 24 inches of ribbon, and then you can trim it to the length that you want um, once you tie it on. I do think it's really cool to like choose different kinds of ribbon. So I've got some with prints. I've got like a rope kind of ribbon. Uh, this one's a velvet ribbon, which is really pretty. But you could also use really cute stuff like these twines, which would be fun. And I feel like it would be really cute if you layered a few things like ribbon and twine to make it really festive, especially if you're not doing the cuff at the top. But if you do want to use the cuff at the top, here's a couple of examples of some fabrics you can use. Um, like I said, I'm not going to sew up the cuff today. We're going to, um, that part is in the tutorial, but these are just cotton fabrics, non-stretch, just some holiday prints, but you can choose whatever you like for the season or reason you're gifting. Um, and I wanted to tell you that these are so quick and easy to sew up that I just went ahead and cut a bunch. I'm just going to sew one with you, but I'll probably after the live sit in here and go ahead and sew up the rest of these because they are that Quick. So cut a bunch and then we'll sew a bunch real quickly. And then you have them, even if you don't need them all, they're ready to go for a quick grab for running out the door for our last minute party or forgot to gift somebody something. So this is a great one. All right. So the first thing we need to do is um, do our rolled edge at the top. Now, if you're not familiar with what a rolled edge looks like, I'm going to show you on this bottle right here. It's this little decorative edge here. It creates this nice little wave. Um, it's super cute, super easy. It doesn't take up a whole lot. It kind of fills in the gaps on um, this edge here and it just makes it look nice and pretty. Okay, so this is one option for this bag. Like I mentioned before, you can do a little cuff at the top like I did with this cute Santa fabric, but you don't have to. Uh, either way is super cute. So for today, we're just going to do the rolled edge because I want to show you guys how to do a rolled edge. Okay. So real quick, while you guys are sitting here for just a second, drop any questions you have in the chat. And I'm going to set up, I had to move my camera stand to start the video. So I'm going to set up my camera over on the other serger real quick, and then I'll 
flip it to that camera and we'll get started with our sewing. So give me just one second. I would turn the camera, but I don't want you guys to get seasick as I move it around. All right. And like magic, here we are. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this is the SO100. This is a um, wonderful serger here that I've got with, uh, with me today. I'm going to adjust this a little higher so you can see more of it. There we go. And I do have, it does hold four threads, but I only have three in right now because we're doing a three thread rolled hem. So you only need three threads and you only need one needle. Let me pull my needle back up. I'll open this up so you guys can see the inside. There we go. Okay, so this is what the inside looks like and it does have really good color coded instructions for threading the upper and lower looper and they're all color coded okay and then these are the left and right needle but we're not using the left needle for the stitch we're just using the right needle so i only had to thread the one so there's actually nothing threaded in this blue one right here all right so it says in here in my instructions i'm just going to show it to you exactly the steps to set up your machine and it continues over to the next page with all of the different settings, what your tensions need to be, differential feed, stitch length, all of that, so that you are prepared to do this stitch. Now, tension is something that you may have to play around with a little bit for your specific machine and the type of thickness of fleece that you chose to get. So just be aware of that. I highly recommend before you start, after you cut these out, before you start sewing on one that you've cut, take a scrap piece and do some test sews to make sure you're getting the rolled hem to look exactly like you want it to, okay? So just for reference, I'll run through the steps real quick, but again, they're listed in the tutorial. Um, you wanna set the needle to a, the um, left needle position. I did switch my um, stitch finger here to the R setting because we're rolling. Um, and then you're also gonna wanna make sure that your tension is one and a half, uh, five, and around eight and a half. You can kind of play around with that if you need to. And then I set my differential feed over here, um, or my stitch length, I'm sorry, to F or one. There's a little dial here. And my differential feed is right here. And it is set to N or one, which is like in the middle. Uh, so that's what we're going with. If you need help with threading the machine, we do have some little tweezers that tuck into the little door here to help you get the threads in here. So don't feel like you have to use your fingers. Get comfortable using um, the tweezers that come with the machine. It makes it so much easier. I even use it to help me thread up through here too. So definitely get comfortable using the tweezers that come with the machine. All right, and it just springs shut nice and easy. Now I am going to, <clears throat> excuse me, Get you a little closer here so you can see the sewing. There we go. Now that we've kind of gone over the machine and I am going to have the short end here. I have not folded it over. I'm gonna sew the rolled edge on both short ends, okay? One at a time. Uh, make sure that your foot is in the down position and you know, you don't have to lift the foot up and down when you're so when you're using a serger You can just lift this Slide it in and then you're ready to go. You don't have to keep lifting that foot up and down I'm going to try to do this with the camera right in front of my face. So bear with me here There we go. Now I like to sew right off of the machine, um, give myself a little tail and I'm gonna trim that and we've got our rolled edge. Super simple. I'm gonna turn it around and do the other side. All right, 
and I only cut off just a little bit, um, just a tad, uh, just to make sure that they were super straight across. You can choose to cut some off. You can choose to leave it on. It's totally up to you. Um, but there's our other rolled edge. You do want to make sure that when you are sewing the rolled edge that the outside of the fabric that's going to be showing when you're done is facing up so that the roll comes to the front of that fabric. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to switch you guys back to this camera while I move this one so you don't get seasick on me because now we're ready to switch over to the SO700. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over this machine a little bit and please ignore everything in the background. This is a much bigger machine. So I kind of have to, uh, get in close for the top part and we'll go over the top part and then we'll do the, um, the bottom, but ignore the other things in the background of my studio. All right. So here is the top half of the SO700. Um, again, it's a four thread machine. I do have all four threaded because we're going to do a four thread overlock stitch with just the most common stitch used on a serger. Um, so this is a beautiful machine. I'm going to lower this down a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. Back up a smidge. There we go. So it's got a really nice big sewing surface and it's got a little catch tray down here. As you can see, which I've been sewing. Um, I'm practicing prepping for today's live. I'm going to move this for just a second so you guys can see the inside of this air thread serger. Like I said, this SO700, I'm obsessed with this machine. All right. So, and you'll see why in just a second. So it just pulls down and out and see how this one looks very different than the last one we looked at. That's because we have this lever here and it tells you exactly with each color for the tension, which one is which, and this is your upper looper, this is your lower looper, and when you turn this dial to one side or the other, uh, and then you set it to thread, so you set it to this um, setting instead of the actual stitching, this is the thread setting, you would flip this over, and then you would pump the air. I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone, but it's literally a click and a puff. I mean, it's just a gentle puff. But once you stick that thread down in there and you do that once, it will thread the looper and then you will flip it over to this one and do the same. But it has to be on this setting. But since it's already threaded, I'm not going to do that. If we have time at the end, I can unthread it and show you. Um, but it really, all of these kind of connect through these pipes when you flip it to this setting um, so that the air stays in those pipes, pushing the thread all the way through your loopers. Okay. And here are your loopers here. And then all of our other settings are going to be here and on this outside area. Simple enough. I'm telling you, it takes two seconds to thread this thing. It's so easy. So let me know if you love what you're seeing. And if you have any questions. Awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up. Actually, you know what, real quick, I'll go through the settings for the four thread overlock. So you guys know them on the video, but they are listed in the tutorial, written tutorial as well. So for a four thread overlock, you are going to need both needles in the left and right position. You're going to need your tension, which is right here, set to three, 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 three. Super easy. You may need to adjust this. I have another serger that I kind of set it more at four, 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 or three and a half. It will depend on the fabric you're sewing, but today we're going to set it to threes across the board because I have found out that that works well for these machines with the fleece. Um, you're going to need to move your stitch finger, which this one's here. Um, instead of R for rolled, we put it to N. Some say S. Um, so just shift it in the opposite direction of that rolled, uh, the R setting. Differential feed is going to be um, N or one, whatever it says on your machine. And then uh, your stitch length is going to be N or three, which my stitch length and everything is over here on this dial, which I love that it's out here on this side. All right. Um, let's get to stitching. You do want to make sure that your blade is up for both of these, um, stitches that we're going to be doing today. Okay. So 
where I'm going to put this little catch tray back under here. Perfect. Real quick, so you guys can see better. We've got our two rolled edge um, rolled edges here, and I'm going to fold this fabric right sides together now. And if you want to take the time to put some clips here or pins to hold it together, you can, especially if you're new to sewing with a serger, you might actually want to. Um, it just makes it easier and you just take them off as you get to them. Um, but fleece does kind of stick to itself. <laughs> so I'm not going to take the time to clip today, but if you want to, you can, okay? So I've got mine um, folded together. Um, I know this keeps focusing in and out. I can't help that. I'm sorry. Try to scoot back a little bit. All right. So I'm going to start at one end with my edges together. I'm going to lift my foot here. And we're just going to sew all the way down this edge, keeping our edges lined up. Oh, my foot's crooked. Here we go. I like really long tails um, so I can finish them off easily. So we're going to do the other side. Okay. So for these top ends here, the ideal scenario would be to take a bigger needle and thread this tail through the hole of a needle and then run it in, th in through these stitches pretty far and then clip it, okay? That will prevent it from fraying and coming apart and everything. Um, I'm not going to take the time to do that today because it's kind of tedious. So for time's sake, I am just going to cut this off. But you would want to properly finish these edges so that they don't show at the top of your bag, okay? Because this is the top with the rolled edge. Um, so you would want to tuck those tails down in here, and that way it doesn't come um, undone. Now for this end, the next step is to square off or box the bottom. So I'm going to switch over to this camera real quick. Let me slide over here so I can show you how to do that. So here's our um, bottom of our bag. You can go ahead and clip these if you want to get them out of the way, or you can leave them because we're going to cut them off when we sew anyways, but I just like to get them out of the way. All right. So I'm going to take a ruler. This is one way to do box bottoms. In the tutorial, I show you another way to like, you know, make your little triangle and then measure down an inch and then do it. That's one way, and I've done a lot of tutorials that way. But today I'm gonna to show you a different way. We're gonna take that one inch mark square, line it up with the edge, um, the side edge and the bottom folded edge. And we're gonna take our Sharpie or whatever marking pen you wanna use, and we're gonna mark a square. And we're gonna come over here and do the same thing to the other side. just like so. Super easy. Done with the marker. And somehow didn't get it on my finger. That's a miracle. Okay, so now I'm going to take some really good fabric scissors. I love these Singer ones. They're so good. And we're just going to cut right into this. I know it's a little scary. Just trust the process. <laughs> Super easy. Now, Lace wants to like hang on by a thread. So sometimes some little snips right in the middle. So you don't cut too far um, to help get that nice square. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There we go. That one came right off. So there's our little scraps. And now we're going to take our um, bag that we've got these little squares cut out of, and we're just going to pull them apart so that those edges line up. And we're gonna stitch across this one and across this one. And that is gonna be our boxed um, bottom on this bag. And this is literally the last step. So let's get back over to the machine. 
roll over here. And as I showed you, we're gonna take those squares and we're just gonna pull them together. And you can clip it if you want to, or you can just go for it like I am. Which is usually my sewing type. <laughs> Now on this machine, there is a little thread cutter here and it is wonderful. So don't hesitate to use it. And I'm gonna get this other one squared away. There we go. And there's our box to bottoms. Again, you would want to like knot these off. Um, you can knot them off and trim the tails. You don't have to thread them back through um, the stitches if you don't want to because these are not going to be as visible because these are going to be on the inside of the back okay there we go i'm going to shift that out of the way so i'm not hugging the camera and now we have this bag you can see the bottoms are nice and square and boxed super easy and i'm just going to grab the inside and turn it right side out and well it's done it is that easy See how they're nice and square, like my little puppet? All right, so I'm gonna grab this one and untie it and slip it onto this bottle really quick so you can see what it looks like. Let me move all my stuff. I got stuff everywhere. I'm such a messy sewer. Are you guys a messy sewer? <laughs> all right, so some cider here and I am gonna slide this bottle right down into here, super easy. It just hugs the bottle perfectly. We've got a pretty little decorative rolled edge, and then we just need a piece of ribbon, which I set down right over here. And we're just gonna wrap this around the neck of the bottle. I'm gonna, sew, I'm gonna try to tie this backwards. Let's see how good I am at tying this, but I can't see it. <laughs> I'm just going by feel, so. There we go. I know my tails are different lengths, but you can trim those. There we go. I did get Sharpie on me. I spoke too soon. Always happens. Never fails. Let's trim that up. All right. So there you go. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. I love these so much. All right, guys. I think these are adorable. Now I did want to show you a couple things. Um, I have a couple more back here that I've made. I know I showed you that green velvet ribbon. Look how cute that is with that cuff. So cute. And then I have this one. My fiance does woodwork and he made me a little tag for it, which I think is super cute. So you, I wanted to show it so you can see that you can put other decorative things or a little ornament or gift card or something attached to it. But I wanted to show you on this one is this stitching here. Do you see that? That is a decorative stitch I did on the serger. It's called flat locking. And on the inside, here, I'll just take it off. On the inside, um, it looks like a ladder. So I'll show you what this one looks like. So it's flat locking on the outside. I chose to show this stitch on the outside, but then when I turn it inside out, you'll see what the other side of the flat locking stitch looks like because it's also really cute. And you could choose to do this side of the flat locking as your decorative stitch. And then if you pull this apart enough, you can actually run a ribbon through that. I mean, y'all, there's so many really cool stitches that you can do with a serger, even decorative stitches. So many people think that a serger is for construction and garment sewing, and I'm here to prove that to not just be the only case. Yes, that is a big part of it. But I do love doing a lot of decorative stitches. And this is probably one of my favorites because it just has a wow factor. Um, and it's super cool. And I just did it all over this fabric. And then I sewed up the back. So you do your decorative stitch on the whole flat piece. And then you sew it up. Um, so that's a really fun one. Um, so maybe we'll have to schedule another live sometime in the new year or sometime next year to go over some more advanced serger techniques. Because I think that would be really fun. And would blow your, your mind. The last thing, I, well, two more things. Um, as you saw, I did kind of have a little mess here with my serger. 
I am going to switch back to this camera real quick. So you see that I've got all of my scraps here. You want to make sure that you're also tossing this right into the bin. Take this out. Open this up. Oh, it's very spring release. Okay, there we go. And then you want to, mine's not dirty right now, but there is some green fuzzies here from sewing this fleece. But after I sew some more of these, this will get kind of dusty and dirty lint and strings. You want to make sure that you keep this clean. So definitely check after you finish a project, check the inside of your serger, clean it out. There's a lot of moving parts in here. And if you want to have successful serger projects, you need to make sure that this stays clean on a regular basis. My number one tip for people when they're cleaning their sewing machines is do not use a can of air and spray the air towards the inside of your machine. It'll Some will come out, but a lot will actually get pushed back into the machine. You do not want that. It will You'll never be able to get it out. It'll get into the motor. It's bad news. Long down, down the road, it's bad news. So don't do that. Get the little brush. Your, your machine comes. Some machines come with a little toolkit. This one has this little cute case. And in here is a little in here somewhere, here it is, is this little brush. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. And this brush right here will get it off of all of these pieces. Just kind of brush it down and it picks it right out of there. Look, it's green on the end. Um, but you can kind of get it all off of here. And the, anything that drops down in here, you can use a little vacuum, like a little light suction vacuum to kind of get the rest of the big pieces out. Um, that would be my recommendation. And this doesn't just apply to sergers. This applies to your sewing machine as well. Be sure you're cleaning them out and doing the proper steps. Okay. That way they last for a long time. You want to keep them working really well. The last thing I want to show you, if you haven't seen these yet on our website or social media, you're missing out. They're phenomenal. Look at this thing. It's a giant universal canvas tote. These totes come in a couple of different colors over on our website on singer.com, which I believe they linked. Um, but these are for taking your machine on the go, whether it's your serger or your sewing machine. Um, and it has a pocket for all of your sewing tools and notions and scissors and whatever else you need to sew on the go. So if you're traveling this holiday season, but you cannot go that long without sewing, because that's me. I take a machine with me everywhere I go. Um, this is a wonderful tote. They're really nice and big. Like, I picked this one up at the office the other day and I didn't realize they were this big and I absolutely love them. I don't even have it filled out all the way. So these right here are currently 20% off on our website. So we still have a few holiday deals going on. I also wanted to let you know that the SO100 that we started with today is $90 off and the brand new SO700 is currently $300 off, which is a phenomenal deal. So Go to our website, check those out. If you're looking for last minute holiday gifts or need to drop some hints, these are on sale. Go get you a serger this Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, download it on our website. And if you do make it, please tag us and use the hashtag Singer Sewing. All right, guys, until next year, I cannot believe I'm saying that. Have a happy holidays and I'll see you soon.